Welcome to Squawk 7000's weekly roundup of aviation news from Ireland, brought to you in partnership with flyinginireland.com and pilot.ie for the week starting October 2nd. Remember to subscribe and to keep us your top choice for Ireland's aviation podcast, delivering news to your device every Monday morning. I'm Michael Cummins. The headlines. Ryanair commits to resuming 600 weekly flights to and from Ukraine within eight weeks of airspace reopening, connecting major Ukrainian cities to over 20 EU capitals. The DAA pledges to provide on-the-ground assistance and training to Ukrainian airports once the conflict ends, proposing a team of 50 staff to aid in various operational roles. The Pioneer Airbus A320 in Aer Lingus's fleet, registered Echo India Charlie Victor Alpha, finished its 23-year service, marking a significant milestone in the airline's history. An online ad erroneously promoting flights from Limerick to Heathrow instead of Shannon Airport has generated humour and banter amongst residents, highlighting the mix-up. And Cork Airport achieves recognition as Ireland's best-performing commercial state body for energy saving for the second consecutive year, planning to invest in a solar farm for sustainable energy generation. Ryanair has committed to resuming operations to and from Ukraine within eight weeks of any reopening of their airspace. It said this would result in 600 weekly flights operated by Ryanair aircraft from the main airports connecting these cities to over 20 EU capitals. Ryanair also plans to open daily domestic flights as soon as those airports could handle them. The DAA, which operates Dublin and Cork airports, has pledged to help Ukrainian airports resume operations once the war with Russia ends by providing on-the-ground assistance and training Ukrainian staff in Ireland. DEA Chief Executive Kenny Jacobs met the Speaker of the Ukrainian Parliament, Ruslan Savanchuk, at Dublin Airport this week as the politician arrived in the capital for the Conference of Speakers of the EU Parliaments. It's believed that Mr Jacobs has proposed that once the war is over and Ukraine moves to restart its aviation sector, the DEA will send a team of about 50 staff to the country to help the airports there train people for roles including security, airfield operations and other functions. It's believed Mr Jacobs has offered these services on a no-fee basis. The DA is also preparing to train about 200 staff from airports in Ukraine and Ireland. During the summer, Ryanair announced that it would deploy up to 30 aircraft in Ukraine once the war ends and the European Union Aviation Safety Agency deemed it safe to fly to and from that country again. The inaugural Airbus A320, welcomed to Aer Lingus ranks in the year 2000, recently finished its aviation journey after an impressive 23-year service with the airline. With registration Echo India Charlie Victor Alpha, this aircraft was airlifted from Airbus's Toulouse factory and touched down in Dublin on June 23, 2000. As the pioneer of the 46 Airbus A320s that have graced the Aer Lingus fleet, 32 still cross the airline's short-haul routes. On its final mission for Aer Lingus, Victor Alpha conducted a revenue flight on September 15, Dublin, Amsterdam, Dublin, before making a pit stop in Newquay for essential maintenance. Once the aircraft was primed for its ultimate journey to Ireland West Airport, it departed Newquay at the break of dawn. Awaiting its arrival at Ireland West Airport was a team from Air Trade Aviation ready to dissemble the aircraft, retrieving vital components, including engines, for repurposing in Aer Lingus's maintenance facilities and other aircraft. In the subsequent weeks, salvageable parts will be carefully extracted, serviced and designated as spare components, paving the way for final dismantling and recycling of the airframe. While Victor Alpha was the vanguard A320 in Aer Lingus' fleet, it's worth noting that Airbus had already found a place in their operations. The Airbus A330, Echo India, Sierra Hotel November, had graced their fleet since April 1994, marking the start of a shift away from the Boeing 747s. Following suit, the Airbus A321 started in 1998, initially serving the Dublin Heathrow route and expanding across the European network. The Irish Aviation Golf Challenge, played in Burr in August, has raised €16,600 for St Vincent de Paul. To date, the total funds raised by the Golf Challenge have exceeded 351000 Volume 2 of the Irish Air Spectacular book will be launched in November, along with the annual calendar and we'll bring you details as soon as they're available. The organisers are most grateful to all who've supported and contributed in any way, particularly the ons knowing support of all those in Simtech Aviation. Limerick's Live 95 radio station has been reporting that folks are scratching their heads over an online ad promoting flights from Limerick. 
Surprisingly, a Google ad popped up showcasing flights from Limerick to Heathrow. However, since Limerick doesn't boast an airport and the nearest one is in Shannon County Clare, the ad has caused quite a stir online. To shed light on the matter, the Clare champion shared a snapshot of the online ad and tagging Aer Lingus to clarify the confusion. In their tweet, the local Clare newspaper added, Hey Aer Lingus, we never knew there was a new airport in Limerick. Perhaps you meant Shannon Airport. The online community have been having some fun with this blunder, especially Limerick residents who've enjoyed a good laugh at the correction. One which we reply said, sure it was renamed Limerick International Airport years ago. Another joked, Clare is essentially a Limerick suburb. What's the issue? We're not entering this argument. And someone else chimed, just a quick tweet to welcome all the Shannon people to Limerick. As of now, Aer Lingus has yet to respond to the tweet, keeping the story very much alive. And if you're involved in a community group or clubs in Fingal, Dublin Airport's Community Fund is now accepting applications, providing an opportunity to secure vital funding. The application window is open for another few weeks, concluding on Friday, October 27th. Established in 2017, Dublin Airport's Community Fund has committed a substantial investment of €10 million Euros over 25 years. Last year saw a remarkable allocation of €400,000 to local schools, clubs and community groups. The fund aims to support projects that contribute positively to the communities around Dublin Airport and applications are welcome from 13 eligible areas from Santry in the south to Rollstown in the north and Tyrrellstown in the west to Port Marnock in the east. The selection of awardees is conducted by an independent grant-making panel. Organisations that have previously received funds are encouraged to propose new projects. Additionally, the Community Fund sponsored up to 20 students annually from financially challenged backgrounds, assisting them in pursuing their education at Dublin City University through its access programme. For those seeking funding, an easy-to-follow how-to-apply guide and the application forms are available on the airport's websites. Any inquiries about the fund can be directed to communityfund at daa.ie. Cork Airport has been ranked as Ireland's best performing commercial state body for energy savings. It's the second year the airport has been recognised with the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, the SEAI accolade, in their annual report 2022 on public sector energy performance. The airport will invest in a new solar farm, which will generate up to 25% of the airport's electricity requirements in the future. This project will advance to planning application stages in the next 12 months to be commissioned in 2025. David Crowley, Cork Airport Sustainability Specialist, said the airport is fully committed to meeting and beating the government's energy and carbon reduction targets and has a clearly defined strategy to do so. And we'll be back with more aviation news after this short break. You're listening to Scork 7000, Ireland's weekly aviation podcast. The Dublin Airport Authority, responsible for Dublin and Cork airports, is inviting applications for their graduate scheme. They're looking for ambitious graduates eager to be part of their dynamic programme. The scheme, set to begin in September 2024, offers 20 coveted spots for a two-year immersive experience. Applications are open to graduates who complete their studies within the last two years, with a deadline of November 19, 2023. Participants in this programme undergo a structured personal development plan, inclusive induction, international assignments, peer mentorship, executive coaching, job rotations, role-specific training, executive masterclasses and a regular meeting with the DAA CEO. According to Graham McQueen, Media Relations Manager at DAA, the airport is a busy environment providing diverse daily experiences. The requirements for the DAA Graduate Scheme are a minimum 2.1 bachelor's or master's degree, mobility and willingness to travel, a strong work ethic, ambition, energy, resilience and a proven track record and the ability to work in a team. George Best Belfast City Airport clinched the title of the UK's most punctual airport for quarter one and quarter two of 2023. A well-deserved recognition validated by the recently released data from the Civil Aviation Authority. The data meticulously scrutinised the punctuality of incoming and outgoing scheduled and charter flights. Over the initial half of 2023, the numbers unequivocally placed Belfast City Airport at the top, surpassing all 25 airports in the extensive survey. This triumph echoes the prior achievement of being Northern Ireland's punctuality champion through 2022. There's an event on October 7th at 11 o'clock at the IALPA offices at Woodford for all IALPA members. Topics include gut health and flying from Professor Barbara Ryan, all things medical from Dr Louise Boyd, AMA, and information and inspiration from Captain Suzanne Morgan on menopause. There will be also information on missing nights of sleep and links to dementia, gut health and what pilots should eat, on flights. 
A new book will be launched on October 16th, Air Traffic Management, Principles, Performance and Markets, edited by Mariana F. Di Maio. This book comprehensively delves into the five main categories of service offered by air navigation services to air traffic throughout all operating phases. It's intended for professionals in air transport management and undergraduate and postgraduate students studying air transport management and aeronautical engineering. An emergency exercise took place at Dublin Airport on Thursday last September 28th to test the airport and other agencies' readiness to deal with a significant incident. The practice is held every two years and is required under safety regulations and was scheduled between 11 and 1 o'clock. Thursday's exercise involved airlines at Dublin Airport, the Irish Aviation Authority and Garda Shikona, the Dublin Fire Brigade, the National Ambulance Service, the Air Accident Investigation Unit and the HSE. Flight operations were not affected. And finally, we like to keep up with the travels of Captain Paddy and Lucky, the two bears, as they continue to raise funds for Laura Lynn and Dogs Trust Ireland. Since the evening of the Women in Aviation fundraiser on the 31st of August, which raised €2,465, Euro, Captain Paddy and Lucky have been on the adventure of a lifetime. They visited the Mourn Flying Club Fly-In and Barbecue with Brendan Digney and Mark Chambers, where the pair enjoyed meeting all the pilots from across Ireland, including some old friends they'd previously flown with. Paddy and Lucky then received a very special invite to visit the collection of the Ulster Aviation Society at Mays Long Cash outside Lisburn. Befitting such a special invite, our high-flying duo dropped in via helicopter, an O44 November Yankee. They were then met on landing by their host, Leonard Craig, who was delighted to invite the bears in and show them around the collection. Later, Mark O'Neill, chief flying instructor at the National Flight Centre, took the bears on Lima Charlie, the DH-104, to the de Havilland fly-in hosted by the Shuttleworth Collection at Old Warden Airfield. The organisers were delighted to welcome them and they flew in the DH-51, DH Dragon Rapide and the Royal Chipmunk, flown once by King Charles III. On the return to Weston, they also flew on the Technum and the Beechcraft Model 18. They were then handed over to Andy Garland who took them to the Malta International Air Show where it's safe to say Captain Paddy and Lucky made a big impression on pilots, crew and spotters alike. The interest in Ireland's VIP bears reached a fever pitch when they made the news bulletins on One News Malta and Squawk 7000. And remember, if you have an aviation news story that you'd like to share with us, include us in your news emails and send your stories to news at squawk7000.ie. Remember, too, we've over 137 episodes of Squawk 7000 in the library, including our summer series of extended interviews with people from the world of aviation. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Squawk 7000.